We really are, with the, with the Idle Door Contemporary Art Fellowship, a forum for Native contemporary expression. It's a very unique position for us to be in. Unique in media, color, design, and certainly voice, this, the Idle Dorg's eighth fellowship, gives five artists the opportunity to display their diverse work in a venue known for its collection and continued support of Native contemporary art. The fellowship revolves around the reappropriation of red, a color that at one point had a negative connotation towards Native people. The work is very socially oriented, it's very political, it's all about Native identity, it's about reclaiming identity. And Meryl McMasters utilizes the medium of photography to explore that concept, often employing herself as the subject. McMasters photographs also incorporate both traditional and non-traditional objects created by the artist. All my work kind of has been um, inspired by kind of the, these really profound moments in my life. I started to uh, see myself in a sense more, more clearly without the distractions of, of the modern world. So a lot of my work really explores the questions of how is self um, constructed and, and I look at that through lineage and history and culture. Native culture is certainly evident in mixed media artist Julie Buffalohead's work, which focuses primarily on the art of narrative painting. Buffalo Head integrates fairy tale characters along with tribal animals, transporting the viewer into a sardonic world of play. Well, people have always call it, called it um, like a dark humor um, when they describe my work. I'm really interested in Native American storytelling. I think the trickster figure represents um, to Indian people what it means to be human because the coyote is, has greed and um, gluttony. But on the other hand, he's also a creator, and he creates the world, and he makes things happen. Creating a world in large-scale landscapes, Lawrence Paul, this year's Invited Fellow, uses his paintbrush to document the past and present of the Native condition and promote political change. I'm just recording history. I am kind of a history painter, and I think I capture the events things that happen in a true form. I don't stand on a blockade. I can give a message to the world and they can look at those things. And it, if they're disturbing and upsetting, at least you can enjoy it in a nice color tone. Like that found in Nicholas Galanin's work an installation artist exploring the exploitation of native culture. I can have this mask carved in Indonesia by talented Indonesian carvers, and it looks similar for a lot cheaper, and then I can bring it back and sell it to the tourist that comes to Alaska for 50 bucks. Everybody wins, right? So that's the economy of culture, and it's generally based on that idea of I love an aspect of your culture. I love the iconography of it but I don't want to deal with the actual people or the source of that iconography. One of those iconic native artifacts, woven baskets, a traditional art form Shan Goshorn reinvented using non-traditional materials such as historical documents, treaties, and even photographs. I don't really consider myself a basket maker or a photographer or a painter or a jeweler. I actually consider myself an artist that uses the medium that best expresses an idea. My work has always been about human rights issues, but this medium has actually fulfilled the goals that I set of trying to engage people's interests. And the Idol Jorg provided that forum for discussion throughout the fellowship's weekend opening. Patrons could attend the traditional award ceremony, as well as the gallery talks with each artist. But this year saw a reinvention of the contemporary arts party. The party was a celebration of native contemporary culture, with Canadian DJ group A Tribe Called Red spinning electronic powwow music, interactive exhibits from local arts groups No No Stranger and Big Car, even the Native American comedy sketch group 1491s presented and performed. And art enthusiasts of all ages could enjoy wandering the Great Hall and galleries of the Idle Jordan Museum until the wee hours of the night.
needless to say, the Idle Dorks Contemporary Art Fellowship continues to celebrate the established and emerging contemporary Native artists of today. Growing up as a young artist, falling in love with the work and the conversation that's created by the artists that are part of this fellowship. So to me, it's always been um, like, a, like the Super Bowl ring of contemporary Native art. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. 